So I made a little video welding on a piece of pat. Here's our power station made by Miller Electric Company. Runs on gasoline. A little Honda 13 horsepower. That's how much power it takes to make enough electricity to do what we're gonna do here. In the ancient times, the uh, Egyptians welded by smashing pieces of metal together with hammers and rocks. And actually enough to like squish it together. And then I think the Chinese probably started the first forging with heat forge welding where they get two different kinds and smash them together when it's super hot. We're going to use electricity. So I just cut this uh, shit off the end here. It's all blowtorched and rusty. And then this also allows me to set it inside the bigger piece of pipe. And it, it'll hold the weight on the edge. This fits like a total piece of shit, so I'm just going to do a, a bunch more cutting and uh, see if I can't get a, a better gap happening. I, mean, I, I can fit my whole arm through the fucking hole. Alright. So. Now I'm just gonna try to get some sort of a straight line happening. The first electric arc welding was created in 1880. It was a carbon arc where uh, I think about 1900 they started doing this sort of process of welding where you use a steel rod. At that time they were covered in lime as an insulator. I don't know what these ones are made out of, some sort of flex. So as you start to weld it actually uh, it's a gross, primitive looking weld, but it works good. 1907 is actually when the first coated, shielded weld comes out. So it runs at about 6,000 degrees Celsius, which is 10,832 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, this process was basically replaced in 1948 by automated wire feed welding, or commonly known as MIG welding. Uh, I can't really think of a practical process for arc welding like this with a stick. I guess uh, heavy duty or industrial where you're outside, you don't have that option of shielding gas. So I refined this gap down a little bit. It's not perfect, but I think I could probably weld this up. You see here where it's cut so it sort of sits on top of the pipe. It's this cap weighs about 40 pounds, so I can't hold it and tack weld it by myself. I'm going to start burning some rod. It's sort of fun to practice this ancient type of welding. I've never really had to do it before, so I, I was having fun, you know, you get the hang of it. It's pretty sparkly lights and uh, you, get a, you really do get a feel for it once you start burning some rod. It feels neat. It's just good to know that I can do it. I mean, if there's ever a, a zombie apocalypse or something, or, you know, I can't really think of any other reason you'd need to use this type of welder. Maybe it's all you got. It is all that's available for me at this particular location. And just so you know, I'm not making any money doing this. This is just to help out a friend. Uh, it keeps me sharp on my, uh, my practice, you know. It's, I TIG weld all day long, and to do something like this, it's like stepping back in time, doing the old dinosaur style welding, which I had fun doing it. So. I had a couple more caps to weld on, anyhow, so I'll get my practice, get my fill in with this. I'm gonna try to give you my point of view. This is just holding my camera behind the my welding helmet so it's always green it's probably around a shade five and as soon as it uh, it's got like a solar panel 
when it senses a super bright ultraviolet light, it switches over to uh, dark mode, which you'll see here. You can sort of can't really see the bark, but you get an idea for what's happening. That's actually liquid steel we're looking at there. I really enjoy welding. I think it's, a, it's, it's amazing that people figured it out and made it as automated as it is. I mean, this is not automated it by any means. You're using a steel rod. So here's a, just some fine tuning. Uh, just a gentle little hit. Uh, I took these slices out of the pipe so I could just so it would bend. It's it is quarter inch steel, so it's a pretty good view of what's happening. There's just a ton of electricity going through that enough to melt it right at the arc it almost instantly jumps from you know average temperature up to 10,000 or 11,000 degrees it's pretty amazing again this is just a little fine tuning uh, finishing adjustment with the hammer. so all of our spacecraft get uh, this quality of work done to it this one's a uh, Expected flight. Oh no, this is a submarine. Never mind. I'm just kidding around. It's a dock or barge or some shit. We'll use uh, some. We'll pressurize the inside with air and then spray soapy water on it. Go over all the all the welds. Make sure nothing leaks. Probably even smear some goo. Or I bet you the paint and should seal it up if I missed any spots. But I do go over a lot of it. Make sure it's. Uh, looks as solid steel as I can. So I, I'm not a professional uh, arc welder. I don't even know what kind of rod this is. Or, you know, I'm just fucking winging it. You know, this is some precise, fine-tuned adjustments with that hammer. Everything's measured twice and calculated and, um, no, no, you, you just burn it together, make it go, sort of like working on the farm. So you can hear, it, you just, if you listen to the little welder working away, that's 13 horsepower. You can hear it when you strike an arc, it loads up, just to give you an idea how much draw this creates. Here the motor spinning away in the background. Here it's really working. I jump around like that to uh, try to avoid warping. I think if you just started at one spot, it went, it'd probably pull away so much that you'd end up with a huge gap. Here I'm actually just doing a second pass on a spot that was especially cratered up and uh, you'll see in a sec I just buzz over it with the flapper disc and it's actually a, a decent weld, it's 
solid. I don't know, I'm, I'm happy enough with it for uh, being an amateur stick welder. You can see that. Uh, that it's, the weld ends up caked in what's called flux. That's sort of the stop. It stops oxygen from getting to the metal while it's liquid. And uh, protects it, lets it cool down a little slower. And like I said, you just give her a little run with the flapper disc. Nice and doesn't even take anything. Super easy to do. And uh, there you go, it's a solid piece of steel. I had fun doing that. I just thought I'd show you guys and whoever watches this must be bored. But that's what I did on the weekend. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.